hello everyone hello everyone welcome back to code studio and in this video we'll be discussing the editorial of the question Marvin and K Sabares which appeared in code forces round 737 diff 2 so uh, I hope you have read the question uh, before coming to this video and I also advise you to read the question thoroughly before moving any further and the link to the question and solution is given in the description below. I'll give you an abstract to what is given in the question uh, before discussing the solution first. Let's just take the given example which is 6, 3, 4, 2, 1 in the uh, question itself. So 6, 3, 4, 2, 1 to discuss what is actually given in the question. So this is the array which is given to us and what we need to find is basically can we divide this array into k subarrays and k in this case is 4 into k subarrays and subarrays needs to be contiguous part of array and after, after breaking this into 4 subarrays can we rearrange those subarrays and merge them again to form a non-decreasing order or increasing order of the elements. So let's just say I uh, I split this into four different subarrays, which are basically uh, one is six, and other is uh, three and four, and other is two, and other one is one. Let's just say I split the uh, given array A into four sub uh, four subarrays, and then let me rearrange this subarray to I'll bring one to here. So one is like this, then I also bring two to here, which two is like this, and then I'll keep this three and four, and then I'll bring this six to the end, which uh, shows like this. And after these subarrays are uh, arbitrarily sorted, we can sort in our own way, and then I'll merge these subarrays, then it will become one, two, three, four, and six, which is uh, nothing but the increasing order of the given array A. So he asked us, for the given uh, element k, can we split the array into four, or uh, can we split the array into k subarrays, and then you can uh, you can uh, change their order arbitrarily, and can we attain a increasing order of subsequence? So this is what is given in the question. Let's just take the other examples and understand exactly how the splitting occurs. Let's just say our second example is one minus four, zero, and minus two. One uh, minus 4, 0 and minus 2. So and the k given in this case is 2. So you have to split this into two sub subarrays. Can we do that? So what the main inner thing is, let's just say there are elements a1, a2, a3, so on till an. You need to split into k subarrays, right? So what happens is when there when there is a contiguous group of elements, you can consider into a subarray, and then after considering all that contiguous elements into subarrays, you can swap them as uh, however you want, and then you can uh, attain the increasing order of the uh, sub increasing order of the array A. So what I meant is, let's just say in this case, one and minus four are not contiguous, so I need to keep one in one subarray, minus four in another subarray. 0 in one array and minus 2 in one another subarray because none of these form into a subgroup right and then I can swap this however I want uh, so 0 will come uh, so I think minus 4 would come initially and then minus 2 would come next then you come 0 then we'll get 1 and then you can sort this into minus 4 comma minus 2 comma 0 and 1 but you require four different uh, subarrays to make this possible but the given k is 2 only so you can't make this possible let me give you another uh, example so that you'll understand better which is 1 2 3 4 and 5 and k given to us is 1 so since 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 all form into a contiguous sum, I can split this into a one subarray only, which is 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. And then there's no need to change this order. You can merge this subarray to form an increasing order of the subsequence. But uh, let's just say I have this given example, which consists of minus 1, um, 0, 2, 3 and then 1, which is basically the array A. And then I am given my k to be something like um, 3. So can we, uh, not 3, so let's just say it is 4. Can we split this into 4 different subarrays? 
So minus one is contiguous, not, minus one is not contiguous to zero. So minus one would form into one subarray. Zero would form into one subarray because it's not contiguous with two and three. So I'll consider two and three, which is uh, contiguous into two comma three as one subarray, and then one as another subarray. And then I can uh, swap these up to form zero, one, two, and three, and then minus one initially to form a um, proper increasing order of subsequence. So what I'm doing is basically I'm picking the uh, contiguous elements and placing into a subarray, right? So what idea that I got in the contest that I'll uh, discuss with you is minus one, zero, two, three and one. Let's just say this is our given uh, piece of input for array. And then this is the, and then these are the location, which is zero, one, two, three, and four, which is basically the index locations. So what I did is I inputted these key value pairs into a map to form something like this. Uh, minus one would form, uh, correspond to zero, then zero would correspond to one, then one would correspond to four, and then two would correspond to two, and three would correspond to three. Uh, why did I sort this? Because I am inputting this into a map and not an ordered map. Why I am inputting into a map? Because I want these keys to be sorted so that I'll check whether the whether the uh, subsequence are forming into whether the contiguous elements are forming into a contiguous pair of elements uh, in the given in the given array. Okay, so I am sorting this down using a map here, and then I am also having the location as a uh, value. Right, so what I'm doing next is basically I'm finding out the sub, uh, which of the following, these are basically the contiguous elements of the array and I'm finding out if these contiguous elements fall in a contiguous place in that given array. So let's just say minus one is zero and then zero is one. So these form actually into a contiguous, uh, contiguous place, which I missed it in the uh, earlier explanation. So this form into a contiguous place. So one for this, one subarray for this. And then next, uh, this, is also sub this is also contiguous, but this doesn't form into a contiguous place. So I'll consider this to be another uh, sub subarray. And then this form into a subsequent subarray uh, because it is contiguous and I'll consider one for this. So I can split this into three separate subarrays, but since let's just say k is equal to four for us. And uh, since we can split the given array into how many small possible ways also you want, uh, I, can, I can split this into four also. So let's just say the given element, which is L in our case, if L is less than or equal to k, uh, we can print out yes in our answer. And if not, we'll print out no in our answer. So this is how uh, we, we actually are planning to solve this question up. So I'll input uh, the elements and their indices into a map and then I'll check if they actually uh, are contiguous, uh, are placed in the contiguous uh, places in that given array. And if they are placed in a contiguous bunch, then I'll consider them to be one subarray and the rest to be another subarrays. And I'll check the, uh, the count of those subarrays and if L is less than or equal to K, then uh, I'll print yes or else I'll print no. This is the solution for this given problem. And let us go to our code editor and to start coding for the given question. So there are so there are T test cases for this question. So I declared in T and then I input at C. And for all T, I am uh, solving, I am declaring a function solve, which will run for each of the test case, which is a void function that I'm declaring above. So for each test case, I'm given N and K two integers so n and k and then i'll input n and k into my uh, this thing program and then i have to declare a vector of elements of size n so vector of int array right so i need not take the i need not take the uh, array actually i can directly take it into a map map int of int uh, which i'll declare store which basically contains the key is the element and then the value here in this case would be the location or index or index of the given um, element. So for int i equal to zero, i less than n, i plus plus. Um, what I'll do is store dot uh, store of um, no int a and then I'll input a, which is a temporary variable to input the element that is coming into the array. 
store uh, store of a is equal to i that is basically the element uh, will will be stored in a the 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 key is uh, the element and then the value is the index which is i right so i stored it i stored this into a map so the map is formed now uh, map is formed now i need to check if it is contiguous contiguous uh, stuff so i have to declare my variable l which is zero initially which is one initially that corresponds to the first element of that map uh, and i'll be considering into the, uh, that into a sub array and uh, so i need to take all the uh, locations into a vector before moving further so vector int uh, locations right of size um, right locations and then for uh, auto uh, element in the store i need to find i need to write down locations dot pushback what i'm basically doing is i'm taking my um, second which is basically the location into another array to perform the uh, traversal easily so now i have my total l to be 1 for now i'll run through the array for int i equal to 0 uh, for int i equal to 1 i less than uh, elements uh, no locations dot size i plus plus and then inside these locations i need to basically check uh, if the things are contiguous if the elements are contiguous so if uh, the elements lo if locations of i minus locations of i minus 1 is not equal to 1 then uh, what does this mean if this means is the the two elements the two locations are not contiguous then if they are not contiguous i'll increment my l or else i'll continue my l basically right so so i'll run i'll run a dry dry run through the given examples before moving further and now i need to just print out my l uh, no if l is less than or equal to k then i need to print out uh, yes and then else i need to print out uh, no so i'll take my uh, test cases into this and I'll run through those test cases once okay so it's telling element dot second is not found so I think I need to uh, include a dot notation here if I'm correct yes so this is yes no yes so uh, the the test case that I told you I'll include that also so four um, five and three which is minus one zero two three four And then it should print yes true so you got it right now two three four no two three one it should print yes again ah, i removed something here shit uh, right now it should run yes it's showing yes again so i'll dry run through each of the example here so what i'm doing is basically uh, first i'll print out the locations for this six three four two one um, so that you'll understand better right so So I'll mask this up. So I'll just print out the locations, which is four three one two zero. That means uh, my first element is at uh, four, right? And then the second is at three. Then uh, third one is at one, and then my next one is at two, and then the last one is at zero. So this is the locations are sorted and come, uh, came because we we have inputted this into a map which which sorts uh, based on the elements and then the keys are the values are obviously sorted there now what i'm doing is i'm checking if these are contiguous 4 and 3 which corresponds to my uh, 1 and 2 these are not contiguous so i have to split them into a sub array so what i did is initially i considered 4 
this particular element to be one subarray that is my fourth element which is one to be in a subarray and then I'm checking if the next one would actually uh, fall into this subarray or fall out of the subarray since this is not equal to since the difference minus since the difference uh, 3 minus 4 is not equal to 1 I am considering this to be another subarray and I am incrementing my L so I, I am incrementing my L that means I have now two subarrays with me right now I am considering next one which is 1 I am checking if this is uh, contiguous no so I am increasing this so which means I have three con three subarrays now next I am checking 2 2 is actually falling into this subarray because 3 and 4 are contiguous here so we can have them into a subarray so what I'm doing, I'm not incrementing my L and then moving further and I checked zero, which is not contiguous with this. So I am incrementing my subarray count again. So what is my subarray count now? So one here, two here, three here, and I'm not updating here because this will fall into the third subarray itself and then four subarrays here. So I have four subarrays here and I have, I have been asked if in four subarrays, can I split this? And the answer is yes. So I am printing yes. In, the, in this case also, I am checking 0 and 1, same contiguous, 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 contiguous. So, I am not updating anything. And then my L is only 1 here. I am checking if the K L is less than or equal to K. It is fine. So, I am printing the answer. So, I think you have understood the solution to this question. I will remove the printing of the locations and then I will submit to the code forces judge to check if our solution is right or wrong. I think it should be right, obviously. Yes, yes, no and yes. So... I'll submit this. My problem is B, uh, Mohammed and K subarrays. I'll submit this. It's taking a little time, I guess. It's in Q. Uh, it got accepted. So you understood, right? What you what basically we are doing. Uh, we used map here instead of unordered map because we want the elements to be sorted based on the keys and values will be linked to the keys and then we are taking these locations into another array and checking if they are contiguous or not and if contiguous I am increasing the total length of my subarrays. So this is how we solve this question. If you love this video, please hit the like down below. If you love the content on this channel, please hit the subscribe button and also share this video to all your programming friends. Thanks and bye.